Hey everyone, this is Michael with the general reading for Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of November 2019. I do hope this video finds you all well, whether you are watching for yourself or cross-watching for another person with Virgo placements. Hello and welcome. I am kind of surprised. It feels like it's been so long since I have done one of these general readings. I am so grateful for all of you who uh, were sending me uh, well wishes and positive energy while I was sick. It really did help. I, I'm just, I'm so grateful to be doing this work too. I was honestly a little nervous to get back after being kind of out of commission for so long. And as soon as I started doing it, I just, I felt life come back to me, which is so strange for me because I've worked so many jobs in my life that I just I, that meant nothing to me, or just they didn't do anything for me intrinsically. It's not like I was doing pointless work or anything, but it just, this really is an absolute gift to be able to put out all of these messages for all of you. So thank you all who have been supporting this channel with your likes, shares, comments, and subscribes. Um, your support allows me to continue doing this incredible work. And um, I did recently have a giveaway on my Instagram for 25,000 subscribers. Uh, we have since nearly climbed to 30,000. So there may very well be another giveaway very soon for those of you who missed out on that. Uh, so if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on my social media platforms, uh, which are all linked down below. Um, so you don't miss out on those giveaways or any special deals I may be doing, especially with the holidays coming up. Um, I also have links for personal readings, Reiki sessions, and donations for those of you who feel so called. Now, for those of you who are brand new to my channel, I do like to start off these videos with a brief astrological report. I will invite someone in the comment section down below to leave a timestamp skipping straight ahead uh, to the actual reading for those of you who aren't interested. I do find that tarot and astrology is generally a pretty nice compliment, however. And this month especially, we do have Mercury going retrograde. I, I really feel like it's it's important to kind of be aware of the astrology, even if you don't know all the terms, just kind of listen to the overall energy, pick up what you can pick up. Um, I, As I said, we are starting this month off with a Mercury retrograde. It is going, um, it, I believe that is until November 20th, so for a good chunk of this month. And Mercury being a ruling planet, it really does affect our energy pretty significantly. The other sign being Gemini, who gets very affected by Mercury retrograde. I mean, we all do, but our energy is so mercurial, it's very affected um, by these periods. And when it's in a water sign like Scorpio, I really always get the sense that intuition increases. You know, Mercury, thoughts, communication, ideas, it's taking this inward focus. And as a result of that, I actually do feel like intuitive abilities do go up. Um, and we are still in Scorpio season, so that's also just kind of in the air already. We just had Samhain yesterday, or Halloween, where the veil was very thin. So some of you may be getting messages from the other side or messages from your spirit guides. Um, kind of keep that in mind as well. Um, that could come through the form of messages, also images or dreams, um, could also be synchronicities in your day-to-day -day life. Um, but with Mercury going retrograde, communication is a bit harder, logic is a bit harder, planning is a bit harder, and, you know, it's not that Mercury is working against us. Mercury retrograde, it, it's actually in our favor because it's ultimately telling us what needs to be refined, what needs to be perfected, um, and it really is just about letting go of control. Um, you know, it, it, that's honestly my best tip for surviving a Mercury retrograde. Don't get too fixed on your plans, don't get too stuck on things. Um, you know, just be aware that there may be some delays. Just stay open and allow and trust. Don't get, don't freak out because things aren't going the way they're supposed to be going. That's kind of just life in general, really, isn't it? Um, and, you know, especially being in Scorpio season, there is a lot of letting go. There is a lot of transformation that's going on right now, and the energy is a bit intense. I Already, just from the pre-shadow Mercury retrograde, I can tell people are really feeling this retrograde in very intense ways. Um, I, personally, I really have not felt it too strongly. I, I'm 
I'm definitely looking at the past a lot. I've, I've been doing that, but I think for us right now, the best thing we can do is just go with the flow and allow it to happen. And you know, you may just find you don't experience those obstacles or delays that everyone else does because it's really just trying to get you back on your path or get you back from where you've strayed from. Um, we do have a uh, Scorpio season going on, as I said, so there's a lot of transformation and there's actually quite a bit of positive things that are happening this month too. It's not all bad. Don't let Mercury retrograde freak you out. Um, we do have, um, we do have several sextiles happening between Mercury and Capricorn, as well as uh, all the planets in Scorpio trining with Neptune and Pisces. So there's actually quite a bit of, of potential growth that's coming forward. I, I feel like there's a lot of figuring out long-term visions, long-term career goals especially, making your dreams into a reality. Again, Mercury Retrograde may not be the best time to start a new project, but it's actually a really amazing time to, um, you know, finish something you've begun or to refine something you've been working on for quite some time. So, I, you know, kind of just use the energy that's available. I do feel like by the end of the month there is going to be kind of a, a catapult forward with all of the energy that's going to be building up. Um, especially in Sagittarius season, there tends to be a lot of movement and a lot of change. Um, so, you know, look forward to that. But right now, it's kind of just going with the flow. We do have Neptune going direct this month as well, towards the end of the month. I want to say it's the 24th in Pisces. Um, again, I do have all of the dates and aspects in the astrology uh, blog down below if you're interested in looking at all of that. Um, it'll kind of give you more specifics and more dates. And just, uh, this is not a comprehensive astrological forecast by any means, but it's just kind of what I feel is relevant for you. With Neptune going direct in Pisces, your opposite sign, your sign of relationships, the house of relationships, there may be, um, I feel like with everything that's been happening with Neptune being direct and with, um, even this month with all of the positive aspects happening between Scorpio and Neptune, we do have quite a bit of clarity that we're gaining. When Neptune goes direct, however, we can kind of slip back into a fog. We can kind of fall into old behaviors, even relapsing into things that might be possible, especially like addiction, actually, with Pisces. Something to kind of just be mindful of if you struggle with addiction or know someone who does. It might be kind of a difficult time. You might want to support that person um, and just really be there for them. Um, but it, it's really up to us whether we allow ourselves to lose the clarity we've gained or whether we fall back into those old habits. I, you know, I think people kind of have this fatalistic view of the planets and the stars, and I feel like it's actually much more... It, it's like the weather. You know, we don't have to freak out. We don't have to have a panic attack because it's going to be raining, but we may want to bring a coat. That's kind of what I'm just saying here with these reports. It's not telling you what's going to happen to you, but you might want to be prepared for certain energy. Um, and with Neptune going direct in Pisces, that's a, a lot to do with relationships for you. You know, you may have learned a lot about the way that you relate to people or learned a lot about your partner or person. And, you know, it can kind of be a dreamy time. It can kind of be an easy time, but don't don't lose the lessons you've gained. I, you never really go backwards anyway, but it's like really take in the lessons now while you still have the chance. Really integrate those because it might be some time before we have this clarity that we have right now. And I'm trying to think... I feel like that's pretty much it for November. Again, I do have the astrology blog down below for those of you who want more specific dates. Could be a good idea of figuring out what might be happening when for you in terms of the reading. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just going to start shuffling now. Uh, do keep in mind that these are general messages, meaning they may not resonate with you. 
Uh, if this video does not resonate with you or you'd like greater clarity for the messages provided, you are more than welcome to check out the other general readings for your other placements or the heart of the matter love readings. Those are timeless. For those of you who are unfamiliar with their moon, rising, or Venus sign, I have provided a link in the description box to calculate your astrological natal chart. Uh, you may find that roles are also switched in the case of uh, two or more parties um, showing up in a reading. The energy could be moved around, the roles could be swapped, just take it as it applies. Um, that's especially true if you are cross-watching for a Virgo, you could very well be this other person or another person involved in the situation. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much that. I am going to be uh, possibly taking some time off in the month of November for personal readings and Reiki sessions. I just want to give you all the heads up. I am actually going to be doing National Novel Writing Month. I've done it for the past two years now. This is the third year. Um, so I, I may be taking some time off to work on my writing and I've just, I've really been connecting with writing a lot lately. That's actually something I want to kind of bring up because of National Novel Writing Month and even kind of Scorpio energy too, especially for Virgos. It's, it is our, uh, it is our second, I'm sorry, third house, which is our house of communication. So this is actually a really good time to write. Um, I've been really enjoying the blogs that I've been doing lately. Um, so I think it's just a good time to do things, to communicate through writing with Mercury retrograde. Of course, messages can get lost too. So I, I think it's just a good way to, to kind of figure out what you're thinking, but also to express yourself creatively um, and really move through this intense energy, really work with it. When you have so many people who are setting their intention on a, a, a cause or on a project like National Novel Writing Month or NaNoWriMo, you do have a, a wave that can actually affect the rest of the collective. So even if you're not participating in it, uh, you may find that this is a good month to do some writing. Um, for those of you who are participating, I do have um, my link for, or a link for my profile down below if you want to be writing buddies. We can kind of encourage each other and motivate each other throughout this month. Anyway, there is, I, I do feel like there is some holding back going on. These cards are kind of taking their time coming out here. We are looking at the energy coming into the month of November. So this could be what has been going on for you in October or even further back, especially with Mercury retrograde. We're kind of in a review period right now. All right. Okay. I am actually using the Ethereal Visions Tarot today as well. Um, I'm not using the traditional Wild Unknown. This is the deck that popped out at me. We are starting off with the Magician in the reverse. We have the Devil in reverse with the Three of Wands coming out together. And then we finally have uh, Five of Pentacles, or I'm sorry, Eight of Pentacles with the Three of Cups in the reverse. So right away, um, some of you, I think you've been kind of burying yourself in work or in a project or just kind of in your day-to-day -day routine. I feel like there's been this tendency to pull away from people. I am kind of seeing that for this collective. Um, you know, kind of an introverted time for sure. And I, I do kind of feel like November is going to continue to be an introverted period as well. But I, I see, I almost feel like some of you may have been escaping social situations. You might have been coming up with excuses or coming up, or maybe you've just really been busy with whatever it is you've been working on, but you might feel a little disconnected as a result from, of that. This could also be referring to energy around you. So someone may be burying themselves in work or they might have just been really busy, uh, especially if this person was a friend, um, possibly a lover or two, but I'm actually getting more of a friendship vibe here with the Three of Cups. Um, I do see, with the Magician in the reverse, I definitely see you're working hard on something. You may be having a hard time manifesting something coming into November. Things might not be happening as quickly as you want. You are still looking forward to the future with the Three of Wands here. I, I think there's still this optimistic energy, 
but there might have been a lot of blockages for you last month. Um, you know, we were technically in the pre-shadow phase for Mercury retrograde, so maybe things were kind of slowed down. This is actually mercurial energy. The magician represents Mercury, so this could very well be your own energy, kind of uh, introverted right now. Um, having a hard time manifesting could also be referring to a Gemini as well. Um, with this Three of Wands, I do still feel like there is kind of this optimistic feeling, though. The Devil in Reverse actually tells me that you're overcoming a lot of dysfunctions, a lot of uh, blockages or behaviors that weren't really serving you anymore. And I, I think you are really trying to come forward. Now, I do, again, want to just repeat that I, I mentioned in the astrology report, there is a potential for relapse towards the end of November with uh, Neptune going direct. I, I do want to just kind of mention that with the devil, because sometimes this does speak about addictions, this does speak about dysfunction. Um, and Neptune going direct, it can kind of be an easy time to fall back into these old coping mechanisms or old way of thinking. So really take the clarity that you have now. Even if things don't seem to be happening as quickly as you want them to, things still feel pretty good overall. You're feeling busy. You might be feeling a little isolated though, um, but I, I still feel like things are pretty productive. Things are still going somewhere. At least that's how they were. I'm going to be pulling an animal card here as well. Any animal guidance for Virgo with this energy? Okay, so we have a few. I'm just going to take the Unicorn card, but we did have Dolphin and uh, Elk come out as well. Unicorn is actually the third eye, the mind. Some of you have been very intuitive, or intuition has been increasing for you for sure, and I actually do feel like that's part of Mercury retrograde, especially in a water sign. Again, um, it does sometimes make people more intuitive, but we don't necessarily understand what our intuition is trying to tell us. We might be getting images or symbols or these feelings, but we don't know what to do with it. Um, but I do feel like your third eye is very active coming into November. There's a lot of stuff going on in the mind. You may be questioning things a lot. You may be second guessing yourself if things aren't manifesting very clearly. Um, but just trust in the divine timing. I do feel like something is eventually coming in. Again, we'll, we'll see more in just a second, but I, I do feel like there is something, whatever it is you're working on, I do feel like you will have success with it. Um, or whatever it is you're trying to manifest, I do feel like it's coming to you. It's just taking some time. There were some blockages here, some ways you were holding yourself back, actually, with that devil card. Could also be referring to a Capricorn individual. Um, or someone who has Capricorn placements, but I really feel like this is more you, actually. And even if the devil is someone else, that's kind of the trick with this card. It's still you. You're still choosing to engage with it. You feel like you can't, but it's always a choice. Anyway. Um, let's see. What are the messages? Oh, interesting. What are the messages for Virgo coming into November? What is being introduced in the month of November. This is especially pertinent to the first half. Could also be um, just what's being introduced. Time is very fluid in these readings. It's just kind of the trajectory of where things are going. So this might already have happened for some of you. Might happen later. Don't freak out. Don't get too hung up on the time. Again, Mercury retrograde causes all sorts of wonky delays too. Just go with the flow here. Anything else? Anything else? That's too many. Show me clearly. What are the other messages for Virgo? Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the first half of November. I'll, t I'll take them. Okay. Okay, there definitely could be a Gemini for some of you. We have the Lovers and the Eight of Cups. Interesting combination here. The Four of Pentacles in the reverse. And the Strength card and the Temperance card also in the reverse. Really, this is honestly pretty interesting energy. So we do have the lovers. This is actually showing up in the day-to-day, -day, but this could still very well be referring to romance 
for a lot of you, but this could also be something pertaining to something you love. Whatever the case is, there's this sense of walking away. You know, needing to climb the mountain here. I actually almost want to start off with this Eight of Cups energy. Because this is kind of a hermit energy card. And in this specific deck, I really feel like this is probably why this deck um, was the one I chose instead of the Wild Unknown. In this specific deck, we have the Eight of Cups here. And this person is leaving this behind. It's not the fulfillment they want. There's just something missing. Something's not there. And even though this person is walking away, what's interesting about this specific Eight of Cups, this art, these cups are still here. They're still right side up. They're not knocked over. In other decks, they're usually broken or toppled over. It's like you're kind of just leaving a messy situation behind. This is interesting. Some of you may be distancing yourself from a lover or a lover is distancing themselves from you. I could actually potentially see, you know, Mercury is also about people coming back from the past as well. This could be someone coming back after this period of time. I, I actually do see the Four of Pentacles in the reverse. I'm actually interpreting this energy as you lowering your guard, you letting go of something you've been holding on to so tightly. And by giving yourself this distance here, you're actually being more open. It's allowing you to communicate more. It's allowing communication to come more clearly. You're opening up, which is interesting because you're withdrawing, but you're opening up at the same time. It's like you need to give yourself space to just be. And this could also be applying to the people around you, Virgo, but I'm feeling like Mercury retrograde for Virgo, that is kind of us in that full-blown hermit mode, for sure. And what's interesting, we have Temperance and the Strength card. Temperance in reverse, specifically. Something is out of balance. And I think that might be what you're walking away from. It's just not the right time for you or for them or for some party involved, could especially be a Leo for some of you. Um, I'm really getting Gemini energy pretty strongly, actually. We have Leo, we have Capricorn. Could be another sign, but those are just the energies popping out at me. Um, and Sagittarius, of course, with Temperance. But I feel like... This isn't you running away. This is actually really reminding me a lot of the general collective card I did um, for this lunar cycle. I have that on my Instagram, again, that's linked down below. I would really check this out if this is resonating for you because I feel like there's just the situation. People just need to take time apart from each other. There just needs to be some space. Now is not the right time. And I, I actually feel like in doing this, it's opening you up. It's not you closing down. Maybe you're just taking time. You're not rushing through things. There's definitely a slow energy. And I do feel like there is love here is kind of the interesting thing. It's just out of balance with the temperance card in the reverse. And the strength card, you're being tested, I think. Or this connection is really being tested. And it's almost like Can you really let this go? You know, it's not about holding on. A relationship shouldn't feel like you're holding on. It should feel natural. It should feel fluid. And I feel like that's kind of the message here. You're letting, you're supposed to let things go with the flow. You might be having a hard time with that. Very interesting. I'm really curious to see what the animal wisdom is here. Some of you, there could also be a little financial loss. You might find yourself spending some unexpected money with that Four of Pentacles in the reverse. Might be making you a little nervous, especially with that magician in the reverse that we've been dealing with, but I still feel like something is coming for you. 
something good. It's just, it's taking time. Things are taking longer than you expected. Whoa, okay. That's too many, but I'm gonna take this one. This actually popped out before Tarantula. You do have a choice to make. There is a decision to make here. That's actually coming pretty clearly with the lovers as well. You kind of have to choose between two things you love. Or maybe you're choosing... You might feel like you have to choose something that you don't love. You might feel like you're leaving something you love behind. Tarantula is about making the right choice. You kind of know what it is. It's that friend who's supporting you through that rough decision. Doesn't feel easy. It's definitely not easy. You know, with the Eight of Cups, there's definitely a mountain to climb here. And it kind of feels like... You're very independent with this, though. Even though you're kind of introverted, it's not that you're shut down to people. That's what's interesting. But you're just, you're very strong with the strength card here. And Tarantula is about moving forward. It's not spider where it's waiting for something to come to it. Tarantula is an ambush predator. It's going to kind of feel out a situation. It has these fine hairs, right? So it's very sensitive to its environment. And it waits for the perfect time to strike, to ambush. And that's almost the energy I'm getting for you right now. You know the timing is off on something. You know this isn't the right time to move forward. And I think you're kind of just taking the time for yourself. You're kind of withdrawing, retreating, regaining your energy. And honestly, that can just be a really effective way of dealing with Mercury retrograde. And I see Frog at the bottom of the deck here as well, poking out at me, which is all about healing rest, returning home. I actually do feel like some of you are returning to something. Maybe this could very well be referring to, uh, you know, holidays, Thanksgiving. Some of you may be returning home. Um, and really reconnecting with yourself, regardless of what your relationship is with your family, regardless of whether you're freaking out or looking forward to it. I, I think it's going to be a good opportunity for you to heal something, to kind of rejuvenate yourself. I feel like there's some sort of healing here. And again, this could be referring to someone coming back from the past, too, for some of you. Frog is about going back to the pond. Even though we've transformed, even though we've grown, we're coming back with new perspective, with new growth. Interesting. Okay. Where is all of this leading? Where is all of this going? What is happening for Virgo in the second half of November or beyond? This is just where the energy is currently flowing. Again, don't get too caught up on the actual time frame. It's just the ener the trajectory of the energy we are in right now. And I'm sorry I'm losing my voice. I am still kind of recovering here. It's a very... I keep talking about Mercury Retrograde. I'm sorry, it's not like, it's really not bad. It's just, it's a time to be quiet. It's a time to listen. Okay. Interesting. Oh my God, yeah. There is definitely a conflict coming for you. I hate to say that. Could be with family. Could be with a loved one. And I think you kind of know it's coming, and maybe that's why you're taking some space. Who, Virgo. That's why you're getting in touch with your strength. It might be you standing up for yourself, actually. It could be you kind of starting this. Are we instigating something, Virgo? You'll know when the right time to deal with this is. You'll know. 
Any other messages? Any other messages? Come on, one more. Show me clearly what's happening. Show me clearly. Okay, Knight of Pentacles in the reverse and Seven of Cups in the reverse. Okay, wow. We have the Seven of Wands and the Five of Wands. And then again we have Knight of Pentacles in reverse, Seven of Cups in reverse. It's almost like something is not happening. It's taking so long. You know, with this Knight of Pentacles in reverse, it's like... It's not just happening slowly. It's taking a... It's just stopped. Something has stopped. And there is going to be someone who addresses this. Something is, is coming to the surface here. There could also be deception that's getting revealed, actually. And I know I was talking about Neptune going... Um, direct uh, towards the end of the month. There is, um, God, what is it? There was some sort of aspect. I'm actually going to look at my notes really quickly. I have my laptop pulled up here. It was, um, so we have Neptune going direct. It's Mercury in Scorpio trining with Pisces on the 28th. So the mind, Mercury, it's going to be direct again. We are going to be seeing things much clearer. We're probably going to be seeing something we didn't catch during Mercury Retrograde. That's actually very common in that post-shadow phase for Mercury Retrograde. There might be some information that comes up that wasn't there before, or, you know, we might under recognize that there was actually a misunderstanding, and it seems like it's causing some conflict for you, Virgo. I'm not going to lie. Um, could actually be involving another Earth sign, um, another Virgo or Taurus or Capricorn here with this Knight of Pentacles. Could actually also be um, a late Leo, kind of a Leo-Virgo cusp. Um, and we did have some Leo energy earlier in the read as well with the Strength card. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, honestly, Virgo, the way I am interpreting this, this almost feels like you. You're dropping some sort of truth bomb, and it's it's creating a blockage for people. People don't know how to deal. There's going to be some fighting. <laughs> and I feel like, Virgo, you're just standing your ground. You know, there's definitely some fight happening here. And you're feeling it. You're feeling the tension. You're feeling kind of the pettiness, the childishness of it with this Five of Wands. But the way you're kind of dealing with it, you're kind of just standing your ground. It's like you're preparing yourself for some sort of shitstorm. That's interesting. I, I, I don't want to be negative in these readings, but I want to be honest. And I think you kind of know what this is, or you're going to kind of know, you're going to start feeling it out before it happens. It's not going to surprise you. It's almost like you've been preparing for this. And then someone is just going to say something, or reveal something, and it's just going to kick this all off. Interesting. What is the animal wisdom for Virgo? Wow, very interesting energy. What is the animal energy for Virgo? I just want to see how we are on time. Okay. What is the animal energy for Virgo? Advice, please. Okay. So advice, we have Otter. Interesting. We had two other cards come out as well. Firefly and Oyster. <sighs> okay. This is very interesting. Otter is kind of this playful, fun, spunky little personality. Someone is cracking someone open with this oyster. Someone's not talking. Someone's just being very playful, maybe even kind. I don't feel like this is even intentional, actually. I almost feel like, for some of you, this could be an, an accidental argument that gets triggered. 
like, I don't think the intention is there. Or this person is coming off as playful. They might even be a little mischievous. I don't think they're expecting the conflict, though. And with Oyster, it's like someone's being pried open. Someone who hasn't been sharing something. And I feel like it's going to be revealed. Something is going to be seen with this Firefly energy. Oh my god. Also, still, creativity as well. You know, with Oyster and Firefly, working on creativity, working on writing, even if you're not doing National Novel Writing Month, um, use that creative wave. Use that creative pulse. Could be helpful for you, kind of navigating the energy here. Um, sharing something. And, and you know, taking things lightheartedly. This isn't particularly heavy energy. I feel like... We are Virgos. We take things very seriously. Take things in stride. I know that's hard. I know you're kind of defending yourself here. But also take it in stride. Have a sense of humor with it. I actually think that will help you quite a bit. I feel like there's still things you don't know about. You might know that you don't know, if that makes any sense. You know someone's keeping secrets. Like, it's known. Someone is holding back here. Could be you. God. What did we just read? Okay. I'm gonna pull a color healing card for you as well. Kind of how to work with all of this. Feels kind of stuck right now. I, I was saying at the beginning of the reading, I do feel like something is coming in. There is a, a manifestation that's been blocked. I feel like this is the blockage. You're dealing with the blockage. Watermelon. Oh my god. Have fun with your inner child. That is such otter energy. That is literally what we were just talking about. Alright, I feel like I don't even need to read this, but I will. Um, so this pink watermelon color. Watermelon is a color of softness, gentleness, and compassion that encourages affection, self-acceptance, and kindness. It's, spir it's a spirit of fun and easy access to your inner child and assists people who suffer from low self-esteem, loneliness, and sadness. Watermelon also encourages generosity, healing, and understanding. Allow watermelon rays to awaken your joyous, playful nature. It's time to nourish and nurture your inner child. What exciting things can you do today that will make you laugh and enjoy yourself? Your inner child needs to have fun and play to feel healthy. Close your eyes and visualize yourself as a small child. Ask this child, what would be fun for you to do today? The child may say, I want to go out and throw a ball in the park. He, may, he or she may want to play a game, eat ice cream, or buy a toy. Or they. Um, listen and follow. Before you go to sleep, visualize this child surrounded in soft watermelon color as it rests peacefully. Say, Divine Intelligence, please assist me to connect to my fun, easygoing, enthusiastic nature so I can spread joy and laugh and laughter wherever I go. <sighs> yeah, why so serious, Virgo? I know there's some stuff going on. But it, it's really going to help you to stay playful, to keep yourself as light as possible through this tension. And visualize this, this pink, this watermelon color, maybe that green as well, too. Heart chakra. Get in touch with your heart. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, go with the flow. Play with it. Play with the energy. Don't get wrapped up in it. Don't get swept away by this. It'll pass. Um, I do hope that this was helpful for you, Virgo. Uh, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments down below what you think this is, what's going on for you. Seems very interesting. Um, I, again, do have links for personal readings and Reiki sessions in the description box down below. I may be taking some time off, so if they're not available, check back in a couple of weeks. Um, probably, uh, once December hits. Um, so just keep that in mind. I will have the urgency reading still available for those of you who feel like you absolutely need a reading in that time. Um, but again, I, I won't be gone for too long. I might just be gone for like a week or two. 
Um, so yeah, I, I hope this was helpful. I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye, Virgo, and good luck.